Welcome to another video. After several requests and feedback about my recent G-Shade presets and G-Shade in general, instead of doing a shot on stream, I think making a comprehensive guide about that topic is the best option. So if you ever wanted to know about the best way to make your character or your Final Fantasy world look way clearer and detailed with emphasized colors and shadows, you have come to the right video. So let us talk about G-Shade featuring my final presets that I'm super pleased with, at least until they change something drastically for the filters themselves. First of all, what is G-Shade and is it allowed? Technically being a third party software, it's not allowed by the terms of service of Square Enix. But according to many statements of other players and creators of G-Shade, Yoshi P already put it into a green zone. And as long as you're not doing inappropriate sexual things with your character that may lead to a violation of TOS, you should always be fine. In general, not using third party tools publicly will never lead to any issue with game devs as Yoshida hinted out in a recent interview. Okay, to the first question, what is G-Shade? It is an open source tool developed by members of the G-Posers community, which basically increases the amplification of in-game shaders, sharpening, saturation, lighting and many other effects that the game is offering, but kinda on steroids. And those steroids can definitely be noticed on your power and graphics cards consumption and usage. So take into account that even the slightest amount of using any preset will negatively affect your FPS performance, but mostly it is indeed a worthy trade-off. And how can you use G-Shade and how do you use presets of other players or make some by yourself? First you should visit the G-Posers website where you can simply download G-Shade and install the software onto your computer. Final Fantasy should not run in the background while doing so. Then you're required to sell your soul to the creators of G-Shade when clicking on install, but it's no problem they haven't redeemed it yet. Basically the installation is super straightforward, just follow the instructions and let us head into the topic of presets. For example, when you want to check out the presets that I use, visit our Discord server, navigate towards the G-Shade presets channel and download my gameplay, recording and screenshot presets. And don't forget the off preset, which is used to disable G-Shade. Then navigate towards your basic download folder or wherever you can find these downloads from Discord. Then extract or copy them into one of the already existing preset folders in your G-Shade installation path, which in my case is somewhere next to my Final Fantasy XIV installation, found in my games folder, where you should be able to find a G-Shade presets folder containing all the default presets that are validated by the creators themselves and already a bunch of presets and good matchups to start with. Here you should definitely create a new folder like the Spurious presets or you could create one with your own name and put my presets in there and modify the hell out of them. But before looking into my presets in detail, first you need to start Final Fantasy XIV and customize your G-Shade menu so that you're actually able to see anything. Therefore hit up the default Shift plus F2 button, change that into something more practical or leave it as it is. But definitely adjust the font size if you're playing at higher resolutions, otherwise you may not be able to read a single thing in this menu. Okay, if all this is said and done, you're well prepared to start into modifying G-Shade to your own personal desires. And as this is highly complex, your best bet is to always start with existing presets that you think look really good on your character and game and try uplifting them or take out some features and shaders that may affect your performance too heavily while you're not seeing a whole lot of a difference. At least that would be my personal approach and how I got into G-Shading when Macy recommended this awesome tool to me. And if you want to know a bit more about the details, which shader does what, check out my other G-Shade videos and above all that, visit the Fashionista channel for a much more in-depth looking into this phenomenal software. Because Vance and Scaffy have multiple guides and videos about it and their presentation already shows their experience and expertise when it comes to this little tool. Above that, you can also join the Discord of G-Posers and get into conversations with true endgame enthusiasts, which is always the best method of optimizing G-Shade and other things changing your in-game's appearance. Besides, you can also use your native GPU driver features like Nvidia filters or AMD image sharpening and other adrenaline tools to amplify the visual quality of your game natively, which won't have the same impact on your performance like G-Shade does, which I also talked about in two other videos. Alright, let me try to use my presets as an example for how you can set up your G-Shade to your desires and how it affects your performance and graphical quality. Starting with the Fashionista's Eau Claire as a baseline, I tweaked these presets before the start of my Shadowbringers Relic Guide series 
and I want to share with you some of the knowledge I gathered like always. First, you can see the non-filtered version of my game's footage that with maxed out graphics runs at around 100 to 110 FPS on 4K resolution. And the most important thing I realized over the time of using G-Shade is that most presets only work in certain lighting conditions as they emphasize heavily onto certain extremes and Final Fantasy's graphic engine pushes out these extremes not equally. So I basically tried reducing the emphasis on these extreme darks and lights by adjusting levels and removing all artificial HDR effects or gloom. Which leads me to the performance preset that decreases your FPS just ever so slightly but still highlights color, contrast, sharpness and shadows of the game by a small margin. And here I'm basically sticking with what is most important, adaptive sharpening, working heavily on edges and distant objects to highlight the clarity on them, then clarity itself doing the same thing but on top of it, as well as levels and colorfulness which boost the contrast of the game and provide a little pinch of an HDR effect without actually using HDR, which you should never use in an overall setting like mentioned earlier. The first toggled option FF Keep UI and the last in my list FF Restore UI are used to hinder these shaders to be applied onto menus and interface elements and that they are also properly displayed, which is the biggest advantage of G-Shade compared to AMD and Nvidia filters that can only provide a change to the whole image. So really mad props to the creators of G-Shade. Okay, the recording preset takes this to another level and really starts evoking the feel to work on another graphical engine or how do you make your game look like that effect. So in this preset we're using one of the most essential settings, MXAO, which is a heavy ambient occlusion filter heavily affecting performance and sometimes leading to issues with shades and transparency in fighting scenarios. So in these scenarios you should always favor the in-game ambient occlusion. But when it comes to cutscenes and especially footage where you have control over the character's movement, this is a phenomenal boost and one of the prime reasons why my footage looks like that. The screenshot preset on the other hand even takes that to another level, adding another ambient occlusion filter with QMXAO, being more aggressively on shadowed edges paired up with another clarity setting and using a mild depth of field effect that you could easily increase by yourself for really setting your character into the foreground. Just make sure you're not showing off glowing relic weapons as they tend to lose particle effects with shaders like these. But as these settings tend to drop my FPS below the magical 60 that I want to avoid at all costs because that footage could look stuttery and would end up in a worse quality than without shaders, I mostly don't use this except for screenshots. But maybe you have overclocked your GPU or reduced the in-game settings a bit and are able to utilize this preset in all of its features. By the way, when you want to cut out your character from the background and environment, you can also use the chroma key feature built into G-Shade, but you have to lower it to a higher key below the FF Restore UI and set a proper distance so that you can put your character into the center. But like I said, just go for it and test out this awesome tool by yourself and tweak it in the way you want. Use some presets from the other creators or check out the Fashionista or G-Posers Discord channels for many in-detail tips about the amazing world of G-Shading. So that's all I can tell you about it so far, but if you have questions feel free to hook me up on Discord or ask something in the comment section. Alright, thank you for watching and like always I would love to see you in another video featuring all sorts of info about Final Fantasy XIV. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy and keep loving Final Fantasy.